And now, no, no, this no. is Vine in glorious Technicolor. Yes. It wow. really is, folks. This Good is morning. the part of the show that, uh, that we've been looking forward to. Time to sit <laughs> back and relax. Then there's got to be the greatest song ever. I wander today. Fantastic stuff, yes, none other than old Dick and Kidney himself, now the author of his autobiography, Simply Divine, the Sydney Divine story, Sid, I can't believe I'm sharing a studio with you, it's fantastic stuff, you are a huge hero of mine, as well, a young lad I went into the dry cleaners in the tune one day, and I said, this is my best jacket and it's the only one I've got, they said, is it a good jacket, I said, it's my best jacket, it's the only one I've got, and they said, well, don't worry, because we do the suits for Mr. Divine. Oh, Jing. Hanging what on a the rail, <laughs> hanging on the rail, and you'll remember this was a, was a pale mint green and a powder blue with the sequins and yes. a little bit. And ah. today you're looking fantastic. You've got your pink jacket on. Well, this is, this is, the, this is the launch of the book today in, in Glasgow. Wonderful. So I had to kind of uh, make the effort and, and dress up. Now, it, what's incredible, I've, I've been going through the book, and uh, it's, it's a superb book, because not only uh, does it cover the history of, of, of yourself in show business and your life in show business, but it's like a who's who of Scottish show business. There's all the people, all people I, met, I met during my, my 50 years in the entertainment business. It's quite, I think it's quite an interesting book. Now, you see, when, 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 when I was, uh, was following um, all your stuff, and still am, um, I, I, I was a massive fan, but I saw you as a pop singer. But you started in show business with guys like Andy Stewart, Robert Wilson, and Robert Wilson. Yes. yes. Now, now Andy and Robert, but they, they, they went for the and Kenneth McKellar and yes. all these guys. They went for the traditional uh, Scottish uh, song. What, what made you just depart from that? The, the only reason that that was Scottish uh, uh, was people like McKellar and uh, Andy Stewart and Robert Wilson. Uh, they were all doing Scottish songs, and I was, I mean, there was there was no room, there was no space. Yeah, but yours was a big, it was a very, very bold, de uh, bold departure because, pardon me saying, but you're, you're from the village just outside Cleland and Lanark, That's right, yes. Right, which at the time particularly wouldn't quite be the centre of showbiz. And you've obviously done some very, very brave things throughout your career, but right at the start of your career to say, I'm not going down the mine oh, with it. I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm not going down the mine with everyone else. I'm going to hit the, I'm going to hit the board. And you do that from a very early age. I'd never go down the mines. My father and my brother were both miners, and, and I made up my mind never I'm going to do that because I saw them coming in. I used to have to push my father's uh, bicycle up the hill because he didn't have the strength himself. Shattered. Yes, sh absolutely. After doing like like a ten or twelve hour shift, uh, and the guts of the, the guts of the earth, and I thought, well, that's not for me. But you must have been at, at school with all the lads that they, they, their future was mapped out for them. More or less, I think, yes. I mean, but bear in mind, in those days, you had a choice of trade. I mean, you could, you could leave school and be a motor mechanic, a plasterer, a, a, a plumber, or a bricklayer, but nobody wants to do that nowadays. And try, try and find a, a plasterer or a, pl a plumber nowadays, it's just like, they're, they're like gold. But you went for, you went for the showbiz. I went for the jugular. <laughs> Thank goodness for it that. Was an, it was an easy way out. And, and, and you didn't follow, I know you say there was no room, but you didn't follow the traditional route, and I, I think that's no. absolutely Mind you, I did, I did, I did go to a gentleman in, uh, in Patterson Music Shop in Glasgow, uh, in Bacana Street, uh, called Elliot Dobie for, for singing lesson. I was with him for four years, you know, actually classic, classical training. And, and uh, tell me about the tiny bubbles discovery, which I understand it came from a, a stopover you had in Hawaii. Hawaii, where you were yes, on the way to Australia. Yeah. The Andy Shoot Show. So tell yeah. me about that one. You I went to see this guy called Don Ho, who is like the Elvis Presley of Hawaii, and uh, he was in there and he came on with this song, Tiny Bubbles in Hawaii. Like a, it was like a Dean Martin kind of course Presley. And I thought, that's a great song. And he bought, and everybody was singing along with him, all the Americans. I thought, what a song. So I went out and bought the album. Don Hall, the album was called Tiny Bubbles. I say, I'm, I'm having that. And learnt it, and then it yeah, became your big hit. And you, yeah. learnt, and you earned what from it? 500 quid? Uh, just about. <laughs> <laughs> That's an overstatement. Oh, was that, was that, did, we, did you get yourself all managered up, or do you manage yourself? or? Well, what? I had two managers, uh, who will remain nameless. <laughs> right. we, we know who they are. They know, they know who they are. <laughs> he know, he, Scotty knows them better, probably better than anybody. Uh -huh. uh, he knows what I'm talking about. And uh, I, then I decided that this was, you know, they were getting money for nothing. So I see. Man, all managers are basically leeches. 
Well, right. And kind of person to person, you yeah. also uh, gave Lena Zavaroni a bit of a break, didn't I help, you? I helped her, yes, yeah, a little with, bit. Well, tell us about the song there. Like the song was in there. It was down recording in chapels in London, doing a, a, an album called Doubly Divine. And uh, Tommy Scott said, I just found a little girl in, uh, in Rossi um, called Lena, I said, and uh, she had a phenomenal voice. I said, I can't find a song for her. And, well, there's not many kind of songs that you can give a, a, like a 10 year old girl. She sings, can't sing about broken hearted love, etc. And I remember that there's a, a song from the Johnny Otis band show, Mahi's Making Eyes at Me. Mama! Hey, make it! And I said, that might be all. So then I went back later to put the voices on, what they call it. We'd do the, the rhythm section. we back later, maybe a few months later, and uh, at the end of the session, and Tommy says, listen to this. And I just, and I was, Mama! So you should your own record You could pick the hits. Ah, no, it's just... It was, it, was just, it was just luck. Before know, I forget, there, there, there's a couple of people over there in uh, uh, Arundel uh, of Torrey in Spain who are listening to this program at this very moment and oh listening to it every morning, would you believe that, in Spain, Bill and Jean Barton. Right, so and while we're doing the, the plugs, let's just make yeah. sure people get that your book is available now. It's Simply Divine. You actually will be in the Royal Concert Hall on Wednesday the 2nd, talking about the book as well. Yes, I've been